tissue and organ structures within the 3D model. I'm excited to present groundbreaking work by Professor Hans Clevers that changed the way we understand the biology of the intestine to function. Before his work, the identity of the stem cell population within the gut was inconclusive. But what Professor Clevers proved using a 3D culture model in BME is that the LRG5 positive cells are in fact the true stem cell population that are supported by the Paness cells. To understand the significance of this finding, I'll briefly describe the anatomy of the intestinal crypt, which is shown in the cartoon on the left. Now, it houses the stem cells, which are shown in green, and it's these stem cells that are essential for the long-term maintenance of the intestinal epithelium because they serve to constantly replenish the epithelial cells that are die or are lost from the villi. Professor Clever showed in the 3D model that the stem cells at the base of the intestinal crypt produce the epithelial cells of the intestines and that the new epithelial cells are pushed upwards towards the tip of the villi and once at the top the cells die but are immediately replaced by the next cells. Really in essence it's a clonal conveyor belt constantly moving new cells up. Now this finding would only have been possible in the 3D culture model. This exciting discovery was made by simply demonstrating that LRG5 stem cells alone in cultures shown in panel D or the Paness cells alone in panel E in a BME 3D culture model did not form any recognizable structures. However, when the both cells are placed in culture, they formed an intestinal crypt organoid as shown in G. Now this is time-lapse images showing the formation of the crypt organoids in 3D culture. Here the LRG5 stem cells are labeled with GFP in green, and we can see through the time-lapse photographies the migration of the green cells up towards the top of the villi. Now these models can be conducted with other 3D matrices like laminin or collagen, but it really depends, as I said earlier in my talk, it's dependent on the cell type you're using. Full protocols for all of these are available from AMS Bio. However, I mentioned that naturally occurring matrices, although they're purified, they still are complex mix mixtures present in vivo, but with certain applications, it may be desirable to study specific cell matrix interactions as they play such an important role in the fate of the cell. Matrix technology is ideally suited for this. This innovative technology starts with a muscle adhesive protein backbone structure that incorporates bioactive peptides which mimic the specific biological activity of the naturally occurring extracellular matrix proteins. For example, if we look at the natural fibrodectin matrix protein in the bottom left panel, it contains both fibrin and collagen binding domains. These peptide motifs, for example, the RGD motif, are incorporated into the surface of the protein backbone. Presenting these motifs to cells in culture has been a significant technical challenge in the past, and the muscle adhesive protein is ideally suited for this purpose. And it's really for two reasons. First, as shown on the panel on the bottom right, it allows superior adhesion to the tissue culture surface, while at the same time presenting and making accessible the extracellular matrix mimetic binding motif to the cells. Matrix technology offers a fully defined recombinant protein with distinct intracrine binding sites. The applications of Matrix are much the same as naturally occurring matrices, but it offers the advantage of a defined binding domain. It's also free of animal-derived components, and they're available with just about every intracrine binding motif that's known. Customized Matrix proteins are also available through AMS Bio. With the addition of the Matrix linker, the Matrix recombinant proteins can be readily cross-linked into covalently bonded 3D hydrogels. These are called Matrix Hygel. With this product, you are readily able to engineer the elasticity and or pore size of the hydrogel by adjusting the concentration of the Matrix ECM or the Matrix linker protein. We will now look at the fully synthetic 3D scaffold Alvatex. This 3D matrix is presented as a 200 micron thick, highly porous polystyrene disc that fits into multi-well plates, either on the bottom of the plate or using an insert which suspends it. It's handled in much the same way as traditional tissue culture plasticware. It can be used with or without extracellular matrix proteins, as I mentioned 
earlier. To visualize the true benefits, though, and the innovation within this product, we need to look at its structure in more detail through electron microscopy. Here in the left-hand panel, we can see that Alivatex is comprised of voids. that are about 36 to 40 microns in diameter, and this allows cells to grow within the void. Typically, about 75 cells might grow and fit within that void. But it also contains these interconnects, which are about 12 to 14 micron in diameter. And these interconnects enable the cells to migrate and communicate through the structure. Like in vivo tissue, the cells are never more than 100 microns distance from the nutrient source. And it is within this 3D scaffold in which cells invade, proliferate, grow, and differentiate creating what we could call a mini slab of tissue. In the lower panel here, we can see skin keratinocytes stained with toluidine blue, an image with bright field microscopy. They're growing right through the entire structure, as we can see. This is, of course, a rigid structure that most likely wouldn't support intestinal crypt formation, as shown in a previous example. However, it's the physiological function and differentiation of specific cell types not to mention the ease of handling a rigid structure that makes the Alvatex scaffold so attractive. Here we can see in the left-hand panel the extended survival and viability of Hep G2 cells within the Alvatex scaffold. And on the right-hand panel, what we can see is a significant increase in the albumin production, which is a key characteristic of hepatocyte cells. Now, the short-term survival of hepatocytes in 2D culture really limits their use to studying acute drug effects to within a couple of days. However, there are examples of hepatocytes surviving in Alvatex for weeks, and it's this extended long-term survival within the 3D Alvatex culture that enables chronic drug interaction studies to be performed, which would not otherwise be possible. An important aspect of hepatocytes and drug toxicology studies is the induction of cytochrome P450 enzymes, or what we call CYP enzymes. These graphs clearly demonstrate a massive increase in the phase one CYP enzyme induction activity within the Alvatex 3D culture compared to a traditional 2D culture. And it's really this activity that makes Alvatex ideally suited for drug toxicology studies. The advantages of Alvatex are not limited to hepatocytes, but they can be used with a whole range of different cell types. What I'm showing here is an example of neural stem cells differentiated into neurons, which is enhanced within the 3D structure. Within the top picture here on the left, what we can see is undifferentiated neural stem cells grown in 2D culture on laminin. And then on the panel to the right of it, labeled 2D, is differentiated neural stem cells on uncoated tissue culture plastic that really show very little neuronal morphology. However, in the panel on the right, within the 3D Alvatex, we can see extensive neuride processes throughout, and that's really indicative of mature neuronal differentiation. Now, this is supported by the data within the graph, which shows an increased neuride outgrowth within the 3D compared to 2D, but also shown as an increase by coating with laminin, which is known to be the preferred extracellular matrix of neural cells. Now, AMS Bio's expertise can help develop your 3D culture model. Here's an example of neural stem cell differentiation again within the Alvatex product that was kindly provided by Laura Stevanato at ReNeuron. The neurons are stained in green for beta-3 tubulin and red for GFAP for astrocytes with a blue nuclear counterstain. These images show neuronal differentiation again within the Alvatex product but also highlights the compatibility of Alvatex with current methods of analysis. In this case, fluorescence immunocytochemistry. But it's also important to note that Alvatex can also be processed by most histological methods. But fixing and staining is not the only option. We can also recover viable cells from the matrix to carry out, for example, flow cytometry. But another advantage is that you can also increase the size of your sample if isolating protein or nucleic acid for biochemical studies because we have to bear in mind that the 3D matrix holds many more cells than in a 2D monolayer. The Alphatex scaffold platform technology is both modular and flexible. I mentioned earlier that the Alphatex product is available as inserts. What these inserts allow is for the scaffold to be fed from both the bottom of the culture and also the top. But they also are very advantageous in co-culture experiments. 
Within this illustration in the middle panel, we can see a co-culture 3D model where cells are in direct contact with each other within the matrix. Whereas on the panel on the right, we can see within the system we are able to set up a 3D co-culture model in which the cells are not in direct contact with each other but growing within a 3D matrix. Now this system is perfect for studying paracrine signaling between different cell types that are in co-culture but not necessarily in direct contact with each other. Lastly, I leave you with what I view to be the ideal drug discovery and disease model. This model would begin by taking a skin sample from a patient and reprogramming to iPS cells. The pluripotent disease-specific cell lines would then be differentiated into functional cell types, of course relevant to the disease, within the 3D matrix. The end result of this leading to accelerated patient and disease-specific drug discovery. Now, all of these tools and technologies to make the perfect 3D model are available under one roof from AMS Bio, with the added benefit that they'll work with you to develop it. In summary, we looked at a range of tools and technologies used in the construction of 3D models. We looked at the power and selection of natural matrices and the advantages of using recombinant matrices within these same experimental paradigms. Lastly, I introduced you to the Alvatex synthetic scaffold and how it's ideally suited for drug discovery. I showed some data examples, but the possibilities are truly limitless. And I would like to thank you for your kind.